Good morning, and welcome to the Gospel of John. We're in chapter 15 and 16 today. Look at that. Wow, racing. And uh, some uh, plans for you, just because we're headed into Lent. We're going, uh, you may know that the Gospel of John in chapters 18 and 19 looks into the passion of our Lord. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try our best to get through chapters 16 and 17 before Lent starts, so that when Lent hits, we are headed into our Lord's passion with him and walk with him through the Gospel of John's uh, accounting of that. So this is going to be some fun stuff. But first, we got to get into Jesus. He's up in the upper room with his... He is in the last 24 hours, but he's teaching them about the church. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught your disciples that night in the upper room about your kingdom and your church. You showed them uh, and gave them an idea of what to expect. And so we ask you, teach us now too, so that we might not be surprised, but might grow and understand how and why all the things that are happening are happening to us and that you're using them, even as you used them in the apostles long ago. Bless us and your church today. Strengthen us by your own spirit in the word and help us to grow so that we are ready for the purposes you have for us too. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so take a look at this. Here is, here's where we are. This is what he's saying at this point in uh, our evening. Jesus is speaking. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. Wow, Jesus, what are you saying? What? Okay, so we'll start right here. What is the world? Um, this is the old created order that is opposed to God. That's the world. Um, so that entire order and way and kingdom that's, that's against the creator, that is what he's talking about. Now, he uses really strong language, at least in our year today. We, um, how does Jesus use hate and love here as contrast? You see him here, if the world hates, um, and he uses the word love. These hate and love in our uh, uh, usage have extreme uh, emotion attached to them, but not in the Bible. They, they, that's kind of a more modern thing. When, when the word hate is used in the Bible, it's discussing what it is that you put first, okay? What it is that you choose to, um, to put first, as preference almost, okay? Now I want, I wanna, I'll give you an example. Um, the classic Old Testament one is, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Now, if we would uh, attach all of our emotional baggage with that, that hate where we, you know, we hate them kind of thing, that um, wouldn't make any sense. Because, well, J Esau, God blessed Esau immensely. Esau's descendants were promised great things. It wasn't, it wasn't that God had negative emotions towards Esau. When he says he hated him, it's saying that he didn't put him first. He put Jacob first. Jacob was the one that he would bring forth the Christ from. He had chose Jacob. Okay, so now bring all that back into our verses so they make sense to us. If the world doesn't put you first, know that it didn't put me first before it didn't put you first, right? So if you were, uh, if you were of the world, uh, you, the, the world would love you as its own. It would, it would take you in. But because you are not of the world, because I chose you out of the world, therefore the world doesn't put you first. Now, that is incredible stuff when you hear it like that, isn't it? What, how does the Christian what, like, understand their place 
in the world. If, if you've, you're thinking, what is that? What does all this mean? What does it mean to be in, we got two words here, in the world and of the world. See, of the world. So the Christian is certainly in the world. That's where we are. <laughs> you, you certainly notice that. But the Christian is called not to be of the world because we've, we've been chosen out. Um, so in other words, though we're in it, we are, we're just here temporarily. We're not part of it. We're not of it uh, in that sense. So what does it mean? Well, it means they're going to treat you. That's that, by the way, that's a description of Jesus. Jesus was not of the world. He came from heaven. He came from above. And yet, that, and, and when we saw how they treated him, you know how they treated him. He, these gents are about to, to witness how they're, they're going to treat this one from above. But he's saying, look, it's going to be the same for you. Don't be surprised. Expect the world to treat you the way they treated me. Now, the old created order doesn't like the new that Jesus is bringing, the new that he's creating. Well, there, you got to see it. So the old and the new are, like, let's set them up as, as boxers here, right? You know, um, dun dun dun. They're, they are absolutely opposed to one another, and they're going to battle. Don't be surprised that death wants to fight life. This is death, right? It doesn't like life. This is, and, and this is the amazing part, is that life looks like death, and that's because... Death is being destroyed here. That's what Jesus is putting to death. He's destroying the power of death and the old. So, uh, you got these two boxers, and they are absolutely... Look at... i got to finish your drawing, Pastor. Come on. Um, yeah, that's right. These two are going to go at it. Mano a mano. This is, this is going to happen. These two are not going to like it. And they're going to... You know how it is in... Um, and you ever watch the wrestling? I, I wasn't allowed to as a boy. I, I just got to hear from my friends about how it worked. They would they would smack talk each other. One would say, oh, when I get into the match, I'm just going to wallop him. And the other one would say, yeah, that guy, does, that guy smells like cheese. And like, you know, you know how it went. Jesus is doing that right here. This is happening. He's saying, don't be surprised that the old way of the world is, is going to be the same for you as it was for me. In, in fact, expect it. So, he, he's giving us an expectation. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. If they kept my word, they'll keep yours. <laughs> hey, that's a good one, right? So, if they, it's going to be the same regardless of uh, whether or not it's me or you. The new and the old, are at, they're at odds. Now, there's this important part here in verse 21. The great, you always look for the butts in scripture, the great butt of scripture, and we can always laugh at that joke, but it's true. So, but all these things they will do to you on account of my name. My name is the way to say it, on account of my name, capital. Okay? In other words, this isn't happening because you, <laughs> you're not the new, I am, and I'm in you. I've just promised to be with you forever and, and to give you my own spirit and all the rest of it and put my name on you. It's my name that they're going to do this to. I don't like it. Well, why are they doing that? Well, it's because they haven't known him who sent me. Okay. Who is, who is he talking about? He's talking about the Father. He's talking about the one who sent him. And this is very important in Jesus' ministry. Why does he keep talking about this? Because the Father above has sent salvation. And if they, they will not have him, if they will not have the salvation, they are going to fight and put him to death. And that's true even for those that trust in that salvation. Now, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. Who's he talking about? Who are they? 
Who are them and they? Well, you, you, you know right here. This is, this is the, the ticket. Their law. There's only one people. That's God's people. Israel. His own people. That's how you know. He's talking about the people of God. In this case, the only tribe left of, of uh, Israel would be the Jews. He's a Jew. And he has come to them and spoken to them. But they have rejected him. And it's about to happen tomorrow. Actually, that very night, he would be arrested. So, um, why does Jesus say there's no excuse for the way he's persecuted? Why, why, why does he say, they hated me without a cause? They had, there was no reason for them to hate me. And the reason is because he is united to the Father. He and the Father are one. There's no difference in the work and purpose of God the Father and God the Son. In fact, uh, let's be honest, God the Son is the work of God the Father. I think you can kind of see there, whoever hates me, hates my Father also. In other words, um, there is the, the, the work is so united, there is absolutely no difference. The Son is only here because of the Father's will. And the Son is the, the fulfillment of the Father's will. So they hated me without a cause. They, they call God their Father. Why won't they have me? Now, uh, I, I really want to emphasize that, by the way, all the people he's speaking to are Jews, okay? He's just talking about they and them as the, uh, the establishment. Um, they, the establishment hated him without cause. Now, that perhaps isn't as surprising to us the moment we understand that. Have you experienced this before as a Christian? When you were hated without cause? Of course. How do Jesus' words explain that to you? Oh, they do. Because you know how it is. You know how establishments are. They don't want to lose their kingdom. Where's that old boxer? He thought he was, he's the defending champ, right? Death and the old order. And along comes this new guy. No, 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 no. Can't have that. The establishment is going to absolutely not welcome this new even though the new is actually the fulfillment of the old. It is the work of the old made new in, the, in, this, the, in this unity. This is the thing that they just aren't able to have. But no surprises there. My old Adam, you know, the sinner in me, he's a resisting uh, so-and-so as well. You know, he's the establishment. And when faith comes along, with the word of Christ comes along, and calls for faith and this, this new man in me, this, this new creation that is in Christ, well, you know, the establishment doesn't like it. And so these two, there, I'll put the verses sign right there. These two are at odds, no question. So, you know, whether you're talking about the persecution and the, the trouble you face within your own life, or even if you're talking about two different people, you know, uh, someone who's kind of more of the world, and then, you know, you, and, and you notice, hey, this doesn't really work. That's true too. Absolutely, all of it is completely true because this is how the Word of God speaks. It speaks on more than one level. It speaks on the personal level, it speaks on the group level, and then it is on the whole, on the cosmic or the all level, universal level. So yes, it's true on all levels. That's how you know it's God's Word. Oh, there. Now you can see what I was talking about. Okay, the point is, here we go. He's got a, they've got no cause to hate him, and yet they do. And I mean, you got to admit, if even you just look at history, even right now, you don't even have to look back in history. Just look, the persecution of Christians is, 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 is so much more than the persecution of every other type of religion. I mean, obviously other religions are persecuted. People are persecuted for their faith. But the number is so dramatic especially in terms of population, that um, you could almost say that Christians are really where the persecution of religion lies. People are persecuting Christ. It's exactly what we see. I think it was, 
I don't want to quote the numbers. I, I did it in a sermon recently, but I don't want to get them wrong now. So uh, go and Google it. Find out what percentage. BBC in the UK did a, did a study recently. I was, you know, maybe about four or five years ago. And they, I don't think they were happy to find out. But it was Christians all over the world being persecuted way more than anyone else. And it, it, on, a, on a level of an epidemic. Uh, big problem. Anyway. All right. Let's let Jesus talk. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I, said, but I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. Whose spirit is the one he promises to send? Did you catch it? The spirit of the Father and Son. So this spirit, well, that's a terrible, that's not a triangle pastor, that's a parallel a trapezoid or something. That's right. We, we get told here by Jesus that the spirit is the spirit of the Father and the Son. That the Father and the Son, uh, the unity they share, the love they share is the spirit. They are one. And they are working to make us part of that, to make us, to join us into that. That's the great work of the Father and the Son in taking you and I and making us united with them. Now, who does the Spirit bear witness about? You heard it here. Look at this. He will bear witness about me. In other words, Jesus. I've drawn this for you before, haven't I? Um, Let's draw it. Here's the stage, and there's some chairs here, right? People that were coming to watch the production. Um, how does the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit work? Jesus is on the stage, and the Father, I don't know where how you, you draw him with a little cap, he is the producer. He's the one who's put on the whole thing. But Jesus is the one on the stage. Where's the Holy Spirit? So this is Father. This is the Son. Spirit is the light. Spirit is the one shining on um, Jesus so that you see him. There's you sitting and watching. All of them are in agreement. See that? The Father has put this on so that you will see the Son, and the Son will do things for you, and the Holy Spirit is making sure you see, yep, he's the place to look, he's the place, he's the one to trust in, this is where the action is. Now, he will bear witness about me, ta-da, and you also will bear witness, because you've been with me from the beginning. In other words, you, you gents, the believers, the ones who will have the Holy Spirit, um, the one who will come to you, he will bear witness through you. Okay, so the Holy Spirit's going to use you. And by the way, Christian, dear one, the Holy Spirit has used you many times in very encouraging ways. You don't need to realize all of them, but every time you confess the creed in a group of people, every time you attend a Bible class, every time you, uh, you say a prayer, where do you think all these things have their origin? That's right. In the Spirit of God, He has been working in you. That faith, He gave it to you by the gospel and has been holding you in it. And He has been working through you, making and moving those new desires, uh, the new that new. So, uh, we have unity. Look at this. Uh, it's important. I, I, I did catch in the picture. I did catch you in the picture because it is absolutely true that the, unite, the agreement and the unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit includes you now there in the Son. That the Son is the way that, uh, that the Father uh, has brought 
us. We see I shouldn't have this little arrow coming in like this. It should be coming in only in this side here. Cross that out. There we go. That's better. Um, all right. So now it's a lot to take in, especially if you're the disciples sitting there in the room. You can picture them. What is going on? Why do they need to hear this? Why do we? I said the, these things to keep you from falling away. I mean, they're going to put you out of the synagogues. Okay? We're talking about hostility for being a Christian. It's hostility. We're talking about persecution. What is worse? Hostility and uh, persecution? Or falling away? Yeah. You got it. So Jesus has told us these things are going to happen. Don't be surprised because what's more important is that you don't lose your faith. You don't fall away. Hold on. Stay in the unity. It's going to work. The plan is a good plan. Trust me. And that's how we're going to end this whole discussion. How is Christ asking you to trust him? It's going to be different from me today. He is calling for you to trust him, to endure hostility, to endure non, non accepting realities in your world and life. That's happening. But you are tempted with the alternative of falling away. How are you? How is he calling you to trust him? What area is he saying? Don't worry. Trust me. Yeah, it's bad, but I, I, I'm going to take you through. And perhaps maybe you want to ask, what else is he asking you to do? What else is he asking of you? After he calls you to trust him, how does he call you to move? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your, whole, your own spirit the one you share with him that you have now shared with us. Strengthen our faith. Help us to endure the hostility, to understand this is our role, that it's good for us to wait and to bear it for the good of others that might see that and be drawn to your son. This is how you drew us to you through the death of your son. Now use us for others. Don't let us be afraid. But give us your spirit to keep bearing witness about Jesus that this is the way. Strengthen us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Remember, we're almost into Lent. We're going to get into the Passion. There it is. But let's boogie through 16 and 17 to make it there on time. See you next time.